Hello everyone and welcome to the Zero K August 2021 V1 Tournament. I'm your host Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we will be getting started very shortly, just getting lots of bits of logistical things set up. And when waiting on the last couple players, but we should be getting started right away. We haven't had a tournament in a while, and this one's going to be very interesting because we just had a fairly major patch for Zero K, where now those of you familiar with the game know that there's caretakers. That's a that's a thing the game has. They're a type of building that you use to help assist construction. Well, now in the most recent patch, we now have factory plates, which are kind of the inverse of caretakers, where caretakers are buildings that just augment a single factory or, you know, you can reclaim or repair, but oftentimes they're used to augment a factory's production speed. Factory plates instead provide another point the factory can build to. So you could basically have cheap second or third queues all at the same time, which is really cool. We haven't seen a whole lot of it yet because it only came out last week, but I'll be very curious to see how that plays out during the tournament because... It creates a lot of interesting situations where you can have a heavy unit building up and a few light units setting up for support, or just have you know, maybe multiple plates, one for each unit type, which would be interesting, or just having large numbers of raiders be built up all at once that you don't have to worry about them dying one at a time, which is more of a, a small convenience for the player, but still. That's a thing. So, we looks like we are getting into it, and double check. Alright, I think first game I'm going to look at is this red versus a sign a. Which will be on Dune Patrol Redux. Alright. So both his ride and his son and are quite strong players. I expect this to be a close game. I I mean, Doom Patrol is definitely a map that can go by very quickly. But I think with these two players, it'll be fairly, fairly even should take 10, 15 minutes. Won't be won't be a wash one way or the other, I don't think. I'd be surprised if it was. But who knows? At any rate, Doom Patrol Redux, a map that I'd say we're likely to see Hovercraft on. Because hovercraft are, that's I mean it's a flattish map. You have basically this one little amphibious bit in the center, or a little swampy bit in the center. So you often see people play hovercraft to go through. Although I think the Redux version modifies it a little bit so that you don't need to use hovercraft to go through the center because it used to be you kind of had to. But now I think you can run vehicles through it. I haven't had a chance to play around with it myself. But we shall soon find out. And now we begin! Hooray! Alright, game starts. We have... We have a match! I guess I haven't seen a sign on a play very much. We've seen a lot of Izzeride recently. I cast Izzeride's games all the time. So I have a decent idea of how they're going to play it out, though I think in the last one I cast them was an FFA, so... But I mean, no, no, sorry. The last one I cast them was versus Randy, and they actually did very well. So, yeah, I'm pretty confident in this one. Izzeride is a strong player, I expect. 
I expect good things from them. I don't expect they're going to be having any real issues with this. So let's get started. See how this goes. Easy ride going immediately for Cloakybot Factory. Interesting choice. While on the other hand, Cloakybot Factory for sorry, that was a sign in A. But also Easy ride going for Cloakybot Factory. So I was correct to begin with, despite not looking at the right player. So Cloaky v Cloaky on this map, and I don't know if you can hear that, that is my cat. His name is Andre. He is a pretty boy. Anyway, the, what was I saying? Oh yeah, right. Pretty standard start, both players going for, actually no. He's a ride going for a fairly aggressive opening. Assign an A, deciding just to expand, protect their workers, not really worry too much about raiding out their opponents. He's a right, kind of taking advantage of that, going over to this risky little triple expansion. Well, at the same time, there's not a whole lot that Assign and I has lost. Just a little bit of tempo. I, I do think his right chose the better expansion point, just because there are three metal extractors there. It's a little harder to hold, but if you can get it early on, get some good defense turrets up, and you know, it's kind of out of the way, you can get a lot of metal off that. At any rate, raiding attempts coming in here from Izride are still actually managing to maintain a little bit of pressure. Quite a bit of pressure, actually. Izride going hard on the eastern front. Making sure Asinone has no easy way of getting out of this. And Asinone, I'm not sure if they're quite sure what to do about this. Already about to lose a Conjurer. Two minutes into the match, and they are down a worker. Asinone moving back a little bit. They're kind of forced to shift over. If they're, are they going to shift over to... No, they're not. Reavers are not on the plate. That is kind of surprising. Although, there is an imp. That's the ticket. Get the imp in there. Bring a glaive around just to finish it off. Nicely done. Very nicely done by Sinone. Just to open things up a bit. Get themselves back in this game. Granted, there is still a very strong force of glaives coming through here. He's a ride. Running at a bit of a disadvantage, though. They have those three metal extractors, but... Well, Asinone has gone and gotten the equivalent on the western side. And these glaives are... Actually running in with a little... Okay, now they have they have the attrition advantage now, having killed off a bunch of metal extractors. But it's still pretty even. Another tick being set up here. I mean, the first one did an amazing job, but the second one might not even have a chance... Glaives coming through here from Asinone are proving to have some challenges. Able to defend, but very nearly got pincered by Ezeride's Glaives. And then they go through here. They're not managing to hold on very well at all. Granted, at the same time, we do have a raiding party from Asinone over to the south side of the map. But Ezeride able to stop that, and unfortunately... Given that, he's right now is a dozen glaives looking to go directly into Sinai's base. Now there's the bait, there's the imp. It's not been spotted. And taking out maj the majority of the glaives. The rest of Sinai's defense coming through, and it's a little bit shaky. Unfortunately, there's only a few seconds left before those glaives get out of stun. And that was a necessary part of this whole process. And Asana and I definitely bought themselves quite a bit of time, but I do wish they had built a Reaver in the meantime. They are not going to be able to win this with pure Glaive, and already we're seeing the factory about to go down. And that's it. Asana and I throws in the towel four minutes in. I expected this would be a much more even game, but apparently that was not to be. So Asana and I very quickly getting beaten by Izzeride. Let's see what else we can find. I don't know if the rest of the game's started, to be honest. I think... Yeah, I don't think a lot of them did. All right, well, Treachery and Anarchid, that could be another good one. So let's just check that out. Because I expect... There'll be something there. Because that was not what I expected from you. Because I don't even this ride that... That short of a match. But hey, good rating coming in from the Glaives. 
Like, really good rating coming in from Miseride. I loved the use of the imps, but unfortunately, Sinai just didn't have the forces to really make that work. Why is it... My interface is all screwed up. Ah, stupid piece of crap. Alright, sorry about this. Not sure it's going to the interface, but we are seeing more hovercraft. Hovercraft versus Cloakie. Kind of more what I expected. Right, Max starting out here. you're raiding out. Anarchate over to the western side. Anarchate expanding a little more securely over to the north while at the same time Kshatriya getting very healthy expansion over to the east and west. And I am going to have to do some adjusting here. Excuse me. Two seconds. Oh my goodness, this is more than two seconds. All right. Uh, why it's not working without HUD presets, I do not know. Which is annoying because it means that the this player list and attrition counter are in the wrong spot. Anyhow, that being that aside, let's get back to the game. Kshatriya. Nice use of knights here, getting through the defenses over in the south in the north side here. Same time, Anarchate able to reclaim over to the west, but Kshatriya having an economic advantage, having taken over the entire southeast. Put themselves in a strong position. A couple bolas coming in from Anarchate over to the south. Those should be able to get rid of a couple metal extractors. But the bigger question is how these knights are going to fare, and the knights are actually faring quite well. The Kshatriya's commander up front as well. It doesn't look like it has a whole lot to it, just... Oh, radar, auto repair. Oh, radar is already built in, what am I saying? So, auto repair. Granted, it is a pretty tough commander. And on top of that, it has the knight supporting it. Anarchid's commander in a tight spot while the bull is coming over to the south. Anarchid looking to find some raiding here. There's one metal extractor down. Couple defensive glaives. One of them does manage to do its job. The other one will be taken out. And that is Kshatri as well. Coming into actually coming into a bit of a risky position here. Kshatri's commander looking to die. Has enough support units to keep itself alive for the time being, but unfortunately no repairs. Anarchist commander similarly managing to hold on. And their bolas have been shut down. So one metal extractor and a couple glaze for two bolas is not a fair trade. Shatra is still coming out ahead here. Yeah, 300 metal for like 200 something plus the cost of the lost metal re revenue. At, and even trade at best. That really wasn't worth it. At the same time, Shatra is just knocking at an Anarchid's door. And Anarchid's commander goes down. That just leaves the factory left. Three knights against a couple daggers and some scalpels. This is not an even match. Ketchy's commander going around the side. Looking to find what they can to take out. And I think this is going to be it. Anarchid, GG's. That's the towel throw. And we are... We are seeing a yet another very quick win. So Doom Patrol. Quick map. Much quicker than I thought it would be. This was a bit more of an even game. But man, Ketchy ran away with it after that little... We, we jumped in right as Kshatra was turning the game around with the raid across the center of the lake. Yeah, it looks like the center of the lake does definitely work for... for Cloak Buzz, or just in general. It's much more friendly. I mean, that was the point was of this version of the map, was to make the center of the lake less hover and amp only. But that was that, so let's... I think that's gonna be... It, is that it for this round? Uh, let's see. Hmm. I might be able to get one more in here. Alright, let's try... Thomas and Magman. See what they're up to. Very, very rapid opening. We're going to be having this. Can make it really difficult for YouTube. I mean, it's not hugely difficult. It is put different timestamps where relevant, but still. Although I kind of wish I knew how to make the timestamp thing because there's a timestamp feature on YouTube that allows you to see timestamps in the progress bar. 
And I'm not sure how to set that up, because that would be perfect for this situation. Ah, oh, for Pete's sake. Alright. Yeah, oh, sorry. Get started here. So, Tom is going for Jump Bot. Magman going for... For Rovers, interesting enough. A very early, very strong Ripper strategy on top of that. Yeah, sorry about this. Oops. Magman? Wait. Oh, that's Thomas! Oh my! Thomas already setting up a very strong contain around Magman's eastern front. Magman, they do have some... They, well, I have this over here, but it's dead. Like, there is no way that's going to be held for any length of time once it gets approached. Same time going for a very early fu Very early fusion. Magman looking to rely entirely on overdrive to get their power back into a decent position. Or, well, build power, economy power, whatever. Can't have Thomas in with the pyros. Getting, a getting rid of this expansion, as I was talking about before. It was dead. It has now been killed. Badger's coming in here, trying to find some way to break this contain. Badgers aren't a bad idea, though I think, considering the pyros, it's a little iffy. The rippers were definitely a nice touch. Totally agree with that, and that is working out reasonably well. Unfortunately, the Ted Pyro dying right on top of the caretakers. So that's two of the characters that are going to go down. Three of them, actually. Ooh, Death Explosion finishing off the last one. That's got to hurt. Thankfully, it's not a particularly bit bad rebuild. Magman, and they aren't too far back when it comes to their overall economy. So it should be fine. Shouldn't be a big deal. Thomas still maintaining that contain and really maintaining the control over the eastern side of the map, which is more the story of the match. At this point, 65 to 32 metal per second, and Magman having to rebuild them. Caretakers, they are still kind of behind. I mean, mainly they're behind just because of the metal income. Though Thomas is using all the metal income they have. Spitting out pyro after pyro. You know, the nice little touch here of dropping the caretakers up front just for that extra little bit of reclaim. Like, Reclaim Fire Bases are one of those things which, they're really cool when they work, and they're a little bit risky to make work. But if you have the position to build them up, it's amazing how much work they can do. Magman coming through here. Has those badgers. And not much else. Rippers are... Kind of trying to defend a little bit here over to the south. Trying to get rid of some of these pyros. But it's just the sheer number of units. Magman having to break through this is not going to have an easy time. I mean, the pyros... The pyros alone could probably just rush into the base. And remember, there are a lot of them and more coming through along the way. Not to, on top of that, Jack's being, built, Jack's being built on mass. I mean, that's 60 metal per second being poured in here. That's one jack every 10 seconds. And you only need, for a base like this, maybe two or three. So, yeah, every... Twice a minute, Thomas is building enough jacks to take out this base. But they haven't gone for it yet. Magman looking to find some room over in the southwest side of the map. Trying to find some breathing room, but it is not going to be enough Ripper getting a little bit too close to the constable, getting slowed down, helping the pyros just to clean things up a little bit faster. Not to mention all of these caretakers making the badgers pretty much moot. And of course, not much else is going to be here. Like, think about it. Once these pyros move in, the badgers don't have close range defense. So they're going to be torn to pieces. Completely burnt out. And there's the pyros coming in. There's the jump into the main base. And now the Pyros should be able to tear apart everything. Even if they die at this point, they are going to be able to burn the entire base to cinders. And that, Magman completely understands. Thomas takes the game. And, oh wow, that was... Man, we missed the part of the game that was actually fairly even. Well, alright, then that is, that is round one. Gonna call it. Round one is done.
round two will start soon. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back with round two once that gets going. <laughs>